Today we are going to show you how to make an easy to use and easy to make pretty nifty little pack stove. It's often called the tuna can stove because that's what lots of people use to make them out of. I'm going to be using this little tin can because I have a nice lid for it that'll allow me to pack it up and seal it in a pretty nice water resistant container. Alright, so let's get started. You're going to need a few things. Um, again, a tin can. You don't want anything too deep. A nice shallow can like this is what you're looking for. Tuna can, cat food can, both will work. You don't want to be getting anywhere as tall as a soup can because that just adds too much space. So once you have your can, you're also going to need some cardboard. Make sure it's corrugated cardboard. Thinner cardboard like cereal boxes won't work as well. You want something that's a little bit thicker that does have corrugation to it. So that's pretty much all you're going to need aside from your other tools. We're going to be using a round cutter, a ruler, just this sharpie, and for the fuel in our stove we are just going to be using paraffin wax. That's all you're going to need. So let's get started. Alright, so next step, we're going to take our can, whatever can we found, and we're just going to measure the depth of it. This one is about an inch deep, so what that means is I'm going to want to cut strips of this cardboard that are a little bit less high than the walls of our can. So again, this one's about an inch deep, so I'm going to cut them about three quarters of an inch. So we'll just mark that out on here. So once we have them marked out, just going to take our cutter, and if you have scissors, that will work just as well. These are just really nice because you can get nice, clean cuts just like that. All right. That's our little strip right there. Next what we'll do is kind of run it through our hands to break up the rigidity of that cardboard. And now we're just going to start lining our can with it like that. So we'll cut a few more and we'll start packing this thing full. When we finish we want the whole thing lined with cardboard so we'll go ahead and start cutting some more. So now we should have enough cardboard, let's start filling up our tin. Alright, so once we have our cardboard ready, we're just going to start laying it in here. You do want to get in there tight. It doesn't need to be super packed, but you do want to get it in there so it is dense. All right, there we go. Our tin is nice and packed full of cardboard. So the next step is to melt some paraffin wax for our fuel. Alright, so now we have our paraffin wax, so we're just going to chop it up. Alright, so we have another little homemade stove, we call it a cat stove. We're going to use this to melt down our paraffin wax. Um, comment, and if you want to see how we made this video, and we'll probably make another video showing how we did this. Alright, so we're just going to put our wax on top of that. 
let it start melting down. So we're just going to keep melting our wax. We do want to make sure we get it fully melted. Uh, big chunks like this are going to be a problem. If we're getting smaller, teeny little slivers, that's not so much of a big deal. But we do want to make sure we melt it all down. Another thing you might notice is we are not using a double burner. Uh, lots of people do like to use double burners to melt their wax. The main reason people do that is because it lowers the chance of accidentally catching your wax on fire. So keep that in mind when you're melting down your wax. Alright, so now we're going to pour our wax, not on the table, but into our cardboard stove. Uh, you'll want to use gloves of some type because this will be very hot. Gonna want to make sure you do a good job of pouring it all over. This tin will also get hot during this process. Not as hot as the pan you just pulled off of this little burner, but it will get warm, so be careful of that. So we are just going to kind of keep pouring it until the cardboard kind of stops soaking it up. Alright, and we'll let that soak in for a little bit. So you're going to want to, as it starts to cool, kind of tilt it over and pour out some of that excess wax. You want enough that it saturates the cardboard, but you don't need this much in it. So just kind of hold it upside down while it's kind of dripping it out. Once it starts slowing down the dripping, you've got most of the excess out. So now we've let our wax solidify. You can see we already tried it a little bit before it solidified all the way. So now we're going to just try and light it. These do take a little bit of coaxing to get lit. I'm just going to let it light and kind of spread. So this will work just like a candle. The wax will soak up from the cardboard and burn off the wax without burning too much of the cardboard off. I like these ones because you can use them just like a candle if you want. Or you can cook on them. And they will last quite a while. And anytime it starts to burn down to the cardboard too much, you can take chunks of that paraffin wax and just throw them on to that and it'll melt the paraffin wax back into the cardboard and you can continue adding fuel into this. You can see it spreads pretty well and we can get a pretty good sized flame going on it. Just get it spread kind of all around. The tin will get hot. I mean so be careful of that when you're using it, but when you're done, the reason I picked a tin with a lid is so I can just smother it out with the tin, put the lid back on, and let it cool down. If you are doing this with a can of cat food or a can of tuna, I would suggest keeping the lid just so you can use that lid to smother out the fire.